Good morning, everyone. And happy Easter to all of you. We gather as God's family this morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as you prepare now to celebrate this great day, let us pause for a moment to reflect upon our own lives and seek forgiveness for any sins we may have committed. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
brothers and sisters. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden in Christ, with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Jesus, that helps with his crops. 
But the Lord is telling us, the tomb is empty. Do not gaze into an empty tomb. Look at what we are called to do. In the gospel today, the disciples didn't understand what had happened. They ran. They ran to the tomb. And poor Peter, being the oldest, he was a little bit behind John. But when they got to the tomb, they both looked in. They saw and they believed. Because they remember what Jesus had told them. They remember what Jesus said, that the Son of Man must suffer first, be put to death, but that he will rise again, and there will be new life, a new beginning. That's for us. St. Paul, in that first reading today, gives witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He talks about it, shares the experience that he heard from the disciples, but he gives witness to the fact that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, and that Christ will come again. My friends, today, 2,000 years later, we are called to give witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are called to proclaim that good news to all people. We are called to stand on that hill and look around and say, Jesus is risen. That we must now roll up our sleeves and do the work of Jesus Christ every single day of our lives. It's not an easy task, but it's a challenge. A challenge for all of us to be open to the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives and leading us and directing us to be closer and closer to Jesus who is our Savior and to follow his command to love one another as I have loved you. He gave the ultimate love by dying on that cross for all of us. Today we are asked to be the eyes and the ears and the voices of the risen Lord, to go into our homes and to our workplaces and to share that good news with the people around us. Don't hide in a corner. Don't let somebody else speak on your behalf. Never be afraid to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let your heart burn with love of knowing that Jesus Christ is risen and that we have the responsibility now to share the good news. My friends, as we come together this morning to celebrate, to give thanks to God for sending us Jesus Christ and thanking Jesus for dying on the cross for our sins, and as now we celebrate the resurrection, let those hallelujahs speak volumes in our lives so that each of us, each of us, will be able to share the good news that people will see in us that sun shining brightly, Jesus Christ himself, that we may be that example and that witness that our world needs today more than ever before of knowing that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and now we have an obligation to share that good news. May God bless you. Today on this Easter Sunday morning, we renew our baptismal promises that we all made many years ago. And to all these prayers I ask you to respond, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lent observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask each of you this morning, gathered here in your homes, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? And all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to confess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. On this most glorious day, let us together now bring our needs and the needs of the world to our Heavenly Father. That our Holy Mother Church may be filled with Easter joy in her remembrance and celebration of Christ's Paschal Mystery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let the light of the risen Christ shining for all the world to see may guide people to repentance and belief in the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and confirmed throughout the world, and especially those in our parishes, that their new life in the Lord may bring new life to the church and the world around them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we not forget the practices we committed ourselves to performing during Lent, and continue our commitment to prayers, almsgiving, and good works throughout our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Glory to our prayer. For those who are suffering in the current outbreak of sickness, that they might be healed. And for the happy repose of all who have died from the sickness in recent weeks, let us pray to the Lord. Glory to our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, especially Joanne George, who had a funeral service this past week, and for all deceased members of St. John's Transfiguration, may they be embraced by the risen Lord this day. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions and affairs we prepare, for your own personal intentions which you have in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever living God, hear the prayers we offer to you on this Easter day. We ask you to hear them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God for the Almighty Father. Filled with the passion of gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice. 
sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to proclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to love you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Be as a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelicals, sing together in the unending hymn of your glory. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Together we pray the faith of prayer. O oh God, Father of all people, in the divine plan, you created the family as a special sign of your love. Your Son, Jesus, walked among us in the family of Mary and Joseph. He created a home in which the Word of God was revered, obeyed, and lived, where they grew in wisdom and grace, gave of themselves unselfishly to God, their family, and others. With the Holy Family as our mind, help us to keep you as the center of our lives and reflect our relationship with you in our homes. Bless and protect each of us, our families and our parish, all members of God's family. Send your peace upon us, grant us the grace to serve you and each other, that in doing so, you may provide glory to you. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, we are angel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, trust in the hell, Satan, and all other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking their own soul. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The masses and the going peace, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God.